It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. We have a great podcast for you today. We're going to talk about financial planning and tennis. What can we glean from the sport of tennis and apply to your financial planning? We're going to go through our financial propaganda of the week. There's a lot of news out there about bond funds, Puerto Rican bonds, about the weather, economists. You need to know and discern the good information from the bad information. Bob and I are going to call out some of the more profane information that's out there on a daily basis. And we're going to go into our mailbag. We had questions come in about how to draw income from your portfolio. Should you be readjusting your portfolio right now in the event that we go into a recession because of trade wars, all that good stuff. So stay tuned. We've got a great show. So Bob, with the US Open upon us, I thought we could discuss what we learn from the game of tennis and how to apply it to our financial planning. And one of the things I think about is the court is different when you're playing singles than when you play doubles. How can we apply that to our financial plan? Well, before I get to that, Ra, I'll never forget the first time I took your mom to the US Open. She thought it was a golf match. <laughs> well, I guess everyone's wearing collared shirts, so it's probably not that much different in terms of the crowd. Nonetheless, we had a good time. But you know, when it comes to financial planning, you know, playing doubles in tennis or playing singles, you know, there's a little bit of nuance, right? If you're playing doubles, you're married, you know, you're playing on a wider court, you have a lot of different issues. But when you're in singles, you're in a smaller court, and the issues are the same, but a little bit nuanced. That's right. And what we find is, and I had a couple come in the other week, is a lot of times maybe you're the interested spouse in the finances, and maybe you're married to a disinterested spouse who doesn't care about the finances, and you might think, I'm going to take care of everything on my own. But that doesn't really work well in tennis, and it doesn't work well with financial planning. You're right, Ryan. I don't care how good a tennis player you are. If you're playing doubles and your partner's sitting on the bench, in the long run, you're going to lose. And the other problem with that is in retirement planning, it's your spouse who ends up as the loser. Yes, exactly. Because if they don't know where everything is, like we had a spouse who didn't know where everything was and their husband actually had a stroke, which was very scary. And he had literally insurance policies and shoe boxes. I mean, he had stuff <laughs> everywhere hidden. So there was no game plan in place. And it was just a huge disservice because this woman was under so much duress at that time. And you know, like you can prevent that by being proactive and getting everybody involved. Well, that's what we do. We, we set people up with a 360 financial portal because not only do you have everything in one place, but you have one password. You don't have to look up 10 or a dozen passwords and sign-ons. And I'll tell you what, when you lose your spouse, it's the worst time of your life. And you certainly don't want to be scrambling around to find out if you have any money to pay your bills. Exactly. So yes, use technology, just like we have our 360 portal. There's a lot of programs out there where you can bring everything into one place. And your point, Bob, that one password makes life so much easier. The other thing, Bob, that we see in tennis is some players play better on different surfaces, like Peter Sampras, Steffi Graf did really well on grass whereas Andre Agassi and Jimmy Connors played really well in hard courts. How can we kind of correlate that into our, our financial advisor and the right one for what our needs are? Yeah, you know, it really doesn't make sense, does it, Ry? You have a champion like Pete Sampras who had a great ground stroke. You know, why was he so much better on grass than he was on hard court? I mean, you had to ask yourself the same question. Is the advisor who's making all the money in the stock market right now the person who's going to enable you to, to go through the distribution stage of your life and make sure you have the income you need to achieve your goals? Exactly. Because when you're wealth accumulation stage, it's no big deal. You know, you can afford the volatility in your portfolio. You, you have a lot of aggressive products in your portfolio. It's not that big a deal, but the stakes are much, much higher as you get close to retirement. And in, in retirement, it's not about making the most you can make. It's about protecting your portfolio and then starting to draw from your portfolio, Bob. And we saw that so many times after 2008, many of our clients came to us and they were devastated. They lost half their net worth because they were working with a stockbroker who didn't believe in the bond market, didn't think they needed income because they were just projecting their own strategy, their own thoughts on you know someone who's 20, 30, 40 years older than them. And as a result, they lost half their net worth, right? Because these people are prejudiced towards the markets because of their own beliefs. 
Yeah, and it's crazy. I mean, how many people come into our office, Bob, that have never had a financial plan run? And I have to say, it's always important to have a financial plan run. But man, if you're like 50 now or you're getting closer to retirement and retirement now, you're not running financial projections, that's a very bad sign, Bob. You know what, Ryan? You know what I love about a projection? A wealth projection is something that's real. You can see it. And you know what? It's, It's really that picture, that vision of your future, which is, you know, that vision against your fear. Right. So it's it's so important to have that done to be able to see where you're going to be, not just today, but every day for the rest of your life. And it's amazing. Like I had a couple come in uh, about two weeks ago and you know, they have several million dollars and they're literally about five years from retirement. And they were shocked that we could run pr- financial projections like that's hmm. crazy. <laughs> I mean, you know, this, in the words of Ronald Reagan, right. Trust, but verify. You know, trust what your advisor's telling you, but verify it. Get a projection done. Inflation's real. Taxes are real. You know, volatility's real. Why not know? Why sit there and wonder when you can know? Exactly right. And another thing, Bob, when it comes to tennis versus financial planning is how important holding serve is, right? It's important to win games when you're serving. It allows you to more easily dictate how that particular game is played. How can we apply that to our financial plan? Well, it's real simple, right? Any tennis pro will tell you, keep your eye on the ball. In other words, you know, keep your eye on your goals. Don't get distracted by outside noises. And the one thing that's happened to a lot of you right now, you're being distracted by the noise, inverted yield curves, recession, you know, crash. The media is not your friend. Focus on your goals, not on the noise. Yeah. And I'd say by focus on your goals, the other thing is focus on the things that you can actually control, Bob, right? I mean, it's so important Look, you can't control the market. We can't control what the inverted yield curve means if we're going in recession, but you certainly can control the risk in your portfolio, like we just mentioned. Like, you don't want to get hit like 2008 when the market sold off. You want to put together a portfolio that you know has protection in place. You know, all the like taxes are another big one, Bob. Right. That's great advice. You should tweet that out right now. I mean, that's, that's another thing we can't control, right? Whatever the president tweets tomorrow and what that does to the market, you have no control over that. That's not in the realm of your financial plan. There's other things you can actually take advantage of. Well, Rob, what you're saying is you can control your actions, you can control your emotions, as long as you're focused on the goals, you're, you're focused on the ends in mind. It's so simple. All you need to do is have a 360 financial portal. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. It's a full holistic review where we look at everything. Simply bring in those statements, print them off the computer. They're probably in for August. Bring them in the office. We're going to take all that data and we're going to build for you that 360 financial portal, a place where you can see everything in one place, get a bird's eye view of your entire financial picture. Then we're going to look at all the critical components that you can control. We're going to look at things like income. You're getting close to retirement or you're retired now. Income is a critical component to that, much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize the income on your portfolio to fill in that income gap so you have a lifetime of income you can't outlive. We're going to look at diversification. What underlying risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? If the market sells off tomorrow, are you protected? We're going to show you how to protect and bulletproof your portfolio so you can live off of it for the rest of your life. And we're going to look at fees. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in investment portfolios. Those annuities, mutual funds, insurance products. We're going to show you where all the hidden costs are, show you how to reduce costs so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan. And we're going to determine that very, very critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now, our family has worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan. Or visit our website, thebullish.com or paincm.com and click the Get Started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text 844 844- 752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or simply click the Get Started button on thebullish.com. It's 
It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So Bob, I know we're trying to look at all the bad news out there, but we're also going to give some props to any of the good financial data that's out there as well. What did you find there this week? Do you find anything good, anything just horrible that our listeners need to avoid at all costs? Hey, Rod, you know what I found this over this holiday weekend when you know we were with all our friends and family and all the barbecues? The biggest focus of the weekend was on this horrible hurricane that devastated the Bahamas and where it was headed. And the problem yes. was everybody owned a home on the East Coast was sweating bullets because no one could tell them with any certainty where the storm was going. Does that remind you of any other prognosticators out there that that, that don't have a clue to what's going to happen next? <laughs> Sounds like every economist on Wall Street, Bob. Talk about we got we're going to read the tea leaves, but we're not going to be able to tell you quite accurately what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean here's you know here's the weather guys. You know they have the weather people. They have these satellites. They have all kinds of instruments. They can tell you where the hurricane is, but it turns out they can't tell you with any certainty where it's going to go next. And the same thing with these economists, right? They have all these models, they have all this information, but they can't tell you whether we're going to have a recession. They can't tell you what's going to happen next. You know what it is, right? There's what's all these known unknowns, right? They know we're going to have a recession someday. They can't tell you when. Do you mean to tell me, even though the fact they went to places like Yale, Harvard, Penn, that doesn't help their predictive power, Bob, to tell the future? Well, it turns out, Rye, there's a little fortune teller in Ocean City, and she's got better skills in predicting the future than these Wharton grads do, evidently. <laughs> well, it's crazy. I mean, one of the statistics that you sent over to me this week was at the beginning of the year, they took 69 economists, all from the best brokerage firms, best schools, and they all predicted, Bob, uh, that the 10-year treasury would not go under 2.5%. And we know today it's at like 1.5%. They weren't a little wrong. They were dead wrong. Yeah, that's the problem. Again, Rai, we talked a lot about this today. We talked about event-driven strategies. Anyone who believed these experts ended up taking all their money out of the bond market, putting in the money market fund, waiting for rates to go up, and they missed the biggest bond market move in 10 years. Well, Bob, I found some horrid financial data out there this week at UBS was hit with a $4.4 million arbitration award over Puerto Rican bonds in their funds. Essentially, they're selling their quote-unquote proprietary products, which is already a red flag, and they had all these Puerto Rican bonds in there that the clients didn't know about. And of course, Puerto Rican bonds sold off dramatically, so they did horribly, and now they're being sued for it. You know, there's two red flags here, right? Number one, whenever I see proprietary, it screams at me, Oh, let me charge you more. Right? So <laughs> that's the first thing I see. The second thing I see is they're using leverage, right? They're borrowing money to buy more bonds. And I'm sure they didn't explain that to the poor investors that lost all their money. And they do that to give a little higher yield. So when you're in a low rate environment, you know what advisors, you know what stockbrokers do, right? They reach for yield. And yes. you suffer if you don't understand what the heck they're, they're selling you. So, Bob, are you shocked that a big brokerage house would misrepresent the amount of risk they had in an actual product they were selling to their client. Is that shocking to you? Well, it's only been a, um, you know, a hundred year track record of doing that. But uh, again, you know, let's not digress because, you know, UBS had a really bad week last week, right? They got hit with that $4.4 million arbitration award, you know, against them for selling these things to unaware clients. And then they had another group of brokers that are being sued for their yes strategy, their yield enhancement strategy. <laughs> wow. That just sounds, yield enhanced strategy, sounds, it just sounds dangerous <laughs> from my perspective. It is very, because here's what they do. They take a perfectly safe strategy. They buy you high quality municipal bonds, not Puerto Rican bonds, but high quality double A rated municipal bonds where you're getting good income and they've been appreciating all year. But then to enhance the yield, they go out and they sell stock options against the S&P 500. Now, with the volatility that happened, right, they wiped out millions, hundreds of millions of dollars for these poor <laughs> clients. So enhanced basically means complex. And I think, you know, the, the yes. moral story here is <laughs> you need to understand what you own in your portfolio. Just because someone's telling you it's quote unquote safe, it might not be. And we talked about 
Argentinian bonds, Bob, last week and a lot of these bond funds, like bond funds right now are probably one of the risky investments you can be in. You really need to understand what you own because there's a lot of junk in a lot of these products. You know, Rise, a kudos to you. You've been on national TV for years talking about the problem with these open-ended bond funds and owning underlying high-risk investments like Puerto Rico bonds. But say, for the investor, for you, risk is only something you can recognize after the fact. It's not only something you can see. You don't have the hindsight of someone who's been doing this for a long time. So, you know, what else is in your portfolio is what you want to be asking yourself right now. What hidden risks are there that I'm not aware of? That's why you need to sit down with someone who understands risk, who understands these investments, so you know before the fact. After the fact, doesn't do you any good. Well, that's a great point because proactively, had you known there were things like Puerto Rican bonds in these portfolios, you could have made an assessment that, oh, I don't want to be in this portfolio anymore. It's time to go out. So you can be proactive about these things, not reactive. The things we've talked about on today's show should illustrate for you just how important it is to have a clear financial plan. Our job is to make your plan robust and to help you navigate through the sometimes hard-to-understand financial landscape. That is why we created the Total Financial Master Plan for our podcast listeners. We know it would be helpful to you, so we're offering you an absolutely free consultation as a thank you for listening to the show. Here's what the Total Financial Master Plan entails. It's a full, holistic review where we look at everything. Simply bring in those statements. They're probably in from August. Bring them in the office. We're going to take all the data from your statements. We're going to build you your own personalized portal so you can see your entire financial life in one place. And we're going to look at all those critical components. We're going to look at everything you own. We're going to do an x-ray. We're going to look at your diversification so we can see where the underlying risk is and show you where you need to be proactive in your portfolio and make adjustments ahead of time. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. Are we going into a recession? Are we not? I don't know. But having a portfolio that generates income, that fills in your income gap is critical. We're going to show you how to optimize the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden costs in these proprietary brokerage products, mutual funds, insurance products. We're going to show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio so there's more money in your pocket to compound over time. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we have worked on for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. 6692 and tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan or visit our website bebullish.com or paincm.com and click the get started button to schedule a free conversation call or text 844-752-6692 that's 844-752-6692 or simply click the get started button on bebullish.com It's time for the mailbag. We want to hear from you. If you ever have a question you want to ask myself or Bob, we answer all your questions directly. Simply go to questions at bebullish.com. Email your questions to questions at bebullish.com. If it's a really good question, Bob and I answer it right here on the show. And like every week, we got some pretty good questions. And to help us with questions, we have our man in the studio, Dan Irving. What's up, Dan? How's everything going, man? Hey, Ryan and Bob. I'm um, doing well. Had a great Labor Day weekend last week, and it's making me think, man, why can't every weekend be three days long? Oh, I wish. I wish. <laughs> but it's back to reality, to your point. Well, I'm, I'm sure some of the uh, retirees out there are laughing right now, because as they say, in retirement, every day's a Saturday. <laughs> That's why Bob can never retire. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All right, we got some good questions in the mailbag this week. The first question comes to us from Harvey in Franklin Lakes, New Jersey. Harvey says, Bob, part of me really wants to retire, but I've gotten pretty used to having a paycheck for the last 40 years, and I can't imagine not having one, even though I have savings. How do people ever get comfortable with the idea of not having money coming into their checking account every month? Hey, Harvey, you know, this is a a really great question because everyone has that thought at some point in their life. How am I going to pay my bills 
if I don't have my earned income paycheck hitting my checking account every week? Well, it's simply a matter of transitioning from earned income to passive income. And Rye, what are some of the sources of passive income that Harvey's going to live on once he retires? Yeah, well, first and foremost, Social Security, which I'm assuming, Harvey, like most of us, that's not going to be enough to cover your expenses. Just a wild guess there. And then above and beyond that, Bob, if you're lucky, you have a pension, which is becoming rare or rare, but some of us have a pension coming in. And then above and beyond that, any sort of annuities that you might have, even though we may not recommend that. And then in addition to that, Bob, you have your gap in income. You got to start looking at the portfolio income you can generate over retirement. Hey, Harvey, after 45 years in the industry, I've been doing this for every one of my clients. We simply, once a month, take the income that you need to pay your bills. We transfer it directly from your Fidelity account electronically overnight where there's no cost and the money's in your checking account so your bills are paid, you're out playing golf, you're fishing, you're having a great time. What you really need to do is simply get an A to B portfolio strategy based on your goals, a little bit of planning, don't worry about not earning income going away, passive income, let's have your money working for you instead of you. You've been working hard your whole life. All right, thank you, Harvey, for writing in. Our next question comes to us from Warren in White Plains, New York. Warren says, Ryan, my 401k is a prominent point of pride in my financial life. I think we're heading for darker times. Is it wise to take my current allocation and switch it to something safer? Oh, Warren, it sounds like you have what Bob would call an event-driven strategy as opposed to a process-driven strategy. Like we talked on the show earlier today, you never want to make the current projections of economic conditions drive the way your portfolio is allocated. I would say that is not a good idea, Bob. No, it's, it's a horrible idea, Rye, but you know what occurred to me? You get a lot of questions like this when the market get volatile and the financial media gets you know crazy and out of its mind with, with all these dire predictions. But you know, when you retire, you don't put all your money in cash and spend it all out of this little pile, right? You, you dollar cost average into your 401k, you dollar cost average out. So you need a more diversified strategy and don't let fear change a process-driven strategy that's worked for so many years. Yeah, and conversely right now, going to a quote-unquote more conservative strategy, what does that even mean? Does that mean you put money in cash? <laughs> Do you go into bonds? Well, especially and, in a 401k plan, either putting it in cash or putting it into those evil, horrible bond funds that yes. you don't like so much. In reality, is that could be a more risky. Like a lot of these bond funds, I don't think you realize, but they can go down like stocks go down. That can be very risky. And secondly, Bob, there's risk being in cash. If you're earning 1%, 2% on your money and you pay taxes on that, you're losing it against purchasing power. That's a lot of risk as well. We never think about it from that perspective, but that's risky also. It really is risky. And you know, again, it's all about looking at your overall picture, looking at your goals, making sure you're balanced, making sure you get the return that you need as opposed to the return that you want. Look, everybody wants more. Hey, who doesn't want more, right? But we don't want to reach for return. We don't want to reach for yield. We want to achieve our goals with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as any professional can provide. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one -on -one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free and you can download it right now by texting the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. That's texting the word bullish to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, five ways to maximize your retirement accounts. Just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. Or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com for a link. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting bebullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, be bullish.
Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.